Well, Mr. Nicholson, welcome. I thank you very much for being able to join us this morning. Thank you, Bill. Thank you for the invitation. And glad to be with you all and just appreciate all the great work that you're doing with the Democratic Party here in our community. Hey, it's uh, servants and representatives like yourself, sir, that make this an easy job to do. So it's, uh, you know, the, the love and affection we have for you is genuine. Uh, so we can certainly chat with you all day. Uh, okay. It's a two-way street. Like I always <laughs> say, working together, we can accomplish many things. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so to start off with, uh, Floyd Nicholson is our state senator. Uh, he represents District 10, uh, which covers McCormick, Saluda, Greenwood, and part of Abbeville as well. Uh, so, Senator, for those that may be new to Greenwood uh, or new to local politics in general, can you give us a little bit of background about yourself? Okay, Bill. For those who don't know, I'm a lifelong native of Greenwood. I grew up here, attended public schools here, uh, went off to college at South Carolina State, uh, came back here, started working in education at Greenwood High School, teaching science and biology, uh, coaching football, basketball, working with track. I uh, did that for six years, decided to make a change, um, went to working with disability and special needs, what's called Burton Center now. Ran that program for nine years. I uh, went to work at Whitten Center, the state largest institution for people with disability, one year from 1987 to 88. And the school system approached me about coming back into education, so I got back into education in 1988 and worked at Northside as an administrator for the next 14 years. When I got out of teaching and coaching back in uh, 1978, I had to raise basically an 84 job, and I tried to find something to get involved in the community. So I decided to run for city council in 1982, and I was elected city council in 82, and served 11 years up to 1993. I resigned because I moved out of the district that I represented. Uh, that was elected for mayor in 1994, so I toured along with the idea of running for mayor, and I decided to run for mayor. And I was elected mayor in 1994 and served 14 years until 2008 as the mayor. And then I ran, when Senator Drummond retired, I ran for the Senate seat, and I was elected in 2008 to serve District 10. And I've done that for the last 11 years. This is my 12th year. Well, that's fantastic. Uh what does a state senator do? What's uh, the primary responsibility of that position? I think the primary responsibility is working with the senators to make the laws that the citizens of the state have to abide by. You know, setting the budget for the state uh, agencies that we have here, the amount of money that's going to be provided to these agencies, the laws that we have to abide by, working with the House of Representatives. And it's really is controlling the destiny of our state making the laws that will make our state move forward and looking out for the welfare of all of the individuals living in our state to the best possible way. You know, I think it's important uh, to understand all those points you just shared. We tend to spend a lot of time focusing on the president, uh, a lot of time focusing on Jamie Harrison and Lindsey Graham at the U.S. Senate level uh, and even at the congressional level, but we sometimes forget that most of the stuff that impacts us day to day happens at your level. It's the local level where it happens, you know, because that's where the river meets the road and everything. People have to really get involved in their local politics because those are the ones that it mostly affects their day to day lives. Because although you have the federal government, most of the time the federal money comes down, it comes down to the state. And then the state has the obligation to looking out, you know, for the other uh, say the counties and the municipalities throughout the entire state. And another thing about local politics, you know, that's where the people see you face to face. Right. You're not gonna see most of your federal officials in a day to day, you know, uh, conversation. You know, you go to the store, you're gonna see people contacting you, expressing their opinion about how things are going. So it's important to get involved with politics on the local level. That's great. So let's talk about that point about the money funneling down to the state level. Uh, recently, uh, you helped negotiate and, and, and uh, initiate a $200,000 grant 
for the Greenwood County Habitat for Humanity in Gleamans. Can you talk about how that all transpired, what initiated it, what was your role in that deal, and how has it helped our community? Well, one thing, Bill, I've always been, you know, a big supporter of the nonprofits in our area because those are the agencies that are doing much to help our less fortunate individuals in the community. And those agencies have to work on grants. They don't have a steady streamline of money coming in to them. They have to look under every tree, every possible source to get funding for the things they are doing to help the people in our community. Most of those people are the less fortunate ones. And when I think about individuals in that category, I think one of the biggest things that can help them is home ownership. A lot of them don't have a big job, they can't make the big mortgage payments, but when you think about Habitat for Humanity, what they've done here in our community, built over 100 houses for people who never thought they'd have the ability to own a home. And especially the project they have now going over on Mineral Street, that is very dear to me. I grew up in that community. I knew how the community was bonded together. Those caring people used to encourage me to do my very best at all times, not just my mother, but the entire community. And when I saw the community going down, I saw the apartments over there being uh, torn down, they're gonna be a single family house. That really touched me because I know how important that community is over there. And I wanted to do whatever I could to assist Habitat in making this project really a reality. And that's why serving on the Senate Finance Committee I talked to the chairman about getting some funding for that problem, and he understands the need, you know, of people that are less fortunate. He understands the need of uh, the nonprofits, the great job that they are doing to enhance the quality of life for all individuals, you know, in our particular state. And he was willing to buy into it and provide funding to help with that. And for them to bond with dreams, who do a great job in their weatherization program, having people with the houses when they uh, got seen, uh, problems need to be done. They're willing to put you in and help those people because most of them don't have the funds to get the things done. It might be a windows being replaced, it might be roofs, other things they have on their homes that they can assist them with. And I thought it was a good combination of those two agencies working together and I'm a firm believer in working together, you can accomplish many things instead of each little group doing their own thing. When you can combine resources together, you can get a lot more done. So and that was, that was really the fascinating part of that was seeing you bring two groups together. So that, you know, hats off to you. Um, you mentioned something about being on a subcommittee, and that's one thing I don't know that a lot of people are aware of. It's not just you show up and, and cast some votes. You're actively working on subcommittees. Uh, one of them is the education subcommittee, and I also saw in the last year you uh, helped manage the turnaround or, or oversee the turnaround at John De La Howe over in McCormick. Is that correct? Yes, um, very dear. You know, John De La Howe is a very important facility down there. Used to have kids for uh, trouble kids. I remember when I was working in the school system when kids got in trouble for truancy. You know, they were sent to Della House for a few weeks and then they were brought back. But then all of that sort of got cut out and the attendance down at Della House was real low and there was a lot of money being spent on Della House and there were not many kids being served. But I know Della House is very important to our entire state. Now there was a group, they wanted to close it down. They said, hey, let's close it down for a year and we'll come back. But I'm a firm believer, if close them down, it's not coming back. It's gone forever. And so I began to work with some other people in the city and in the house and said, hey, you know how important agriculture is here in our state and where it is located, all the land they have out there, this could be the ideal place to start a school for agriculture. We got in touch with Clemson University, some other organizations say that's a great thing because you know, agriculture is coming back. We're always gonna need food. We're always gonna need food. And we have a lot of young people that are interested in farming and doing agriculture thing. So we were able to come up with the idea, hey, let's make this a school for agriculture. 
in our state right here. And that has worked great. Although with uh, COVID right now, things, you know, been like everything else, been on hold. But it's a great move. There have been a lot of renovations to the dorms down there. Staff have been hired. Applications are up for the school. So what was their be- what was their situation before this initiative? I mean, weren't they on the verge of closing down or, or yeah. going away? Yes, but closing down because they did not have enough students attending because it was up to the parents then to send them there. You didn't have the agencies like the Department of Social Services, kids getting in trouble. You did not have them send them to Della House. They would send them to the Department of Justice, you know, Juvenile Justice in Columbia. So, you know, the responsibility of being changed. So there was not enough students being placed there to support the institution and the amount of money that was being placed there. I, the, you like know, they, they were working to close it down. There was a big push. Hey, let's close it down. And their philosophy was, we're going to close it down and look at it for a year. But I say, hey, if you close it down, it's gone. It's gone. And then indeed, the you know that Delahow left, that it could not be closed. So we were able to do that. And it's been a big success with the staff being hired and everything. And it's going to be great because there's, there's not only been interest in our state, there have been interest from students out of state and interested in coming there too. And think about where Delahow is located, McCormick. Think about the jobs, the impact mm-hmm. there, the people that are going to be put out of jobs because, you know, you don't have many jobs in McCormick. So any job that we can create by the rural areas is so important. It is. And, and you know, we get into the political realm and, and you get postcards and flyers and, and advertising and, and such like that. And you just don't get to hear in depth these type of stories about the real good that you've helped enable in our multi-county community. Uh, that it has, you know, meaning to a lot of people beyond slogans at the bottom of a postcard. So I, I appreciate you taking time to explain some of that. Recently, you also earned a um, an endorsement from the conservation voters of South Carolina. What does that mean to you? It means, you know, we have to be concerned about our environment. The environment is so important. You know, you just cannot think about building, building, building. Think about the effect of building on the environment, you know, because what type of country we leave for our young people depends upon how we control our environment today. We want, you know, we have our climate change, all of these things occurring, but we have to look at our environment and take those issues very important because our environment is so important to our way of life. What's our way of life is going to be in the future. So I try to look at the environmental issues when we're making decisions about certain things, what impact is going to have on our environment? Because we have to take those things serious about the impact that we're, as the citizens, the impact that we're making on our environment and the day-to-day choices that we make. Amen. Uh, you know, Senator, uh, 10 minutes have flown by so fast, and I've got 50 more questions. Uh, so we're going to have to ask you back so we can cover some more topics. Uh, oh, but yes. Be- <laughs> but before we go, I'll ask you, uh, how can our party members here in Greenwood directly help you in your campaign to, to keep that seat again for another uh, few years? Okay, the first thing, I ask for your prayers, and then just spreading the word, getting the word out. You know, uh, I have yard signs now. I have bumper stickers, buttons. You can call me. I will deliver those to you. And with the pandemic right now, I doubt if we're going to be able to open an office. But if there are individuals who will be willing to make phone calls from their home and everything, you know, we can do that. Just spread the word. And most of all, encouraging people, the importance of this election, people registering. If they're not registering by the 1st of October, and most important, getting out and vote. As I always say, working together, we can accomplish it. It's a very important election, election not only on the national level, but on the local level. So any way that you can support me financially, uh, any way, it will be greatly appreciated because as always, I will continue to work hard for the constituents, not only of District 10, but the constituents of our entire state. Well, thank you very much. We will do our best to pass out your contact information. 
uh, get your phone number out there, get your uh, website link uh, to your Act Blue account to help fund some of those signs and bumper stickers and messaging and even do some phone banking in your behalf. It'd be uh, our honor to do so. And I think our members should know this is Senator Nicholson's first video Zoom chat. So he's finally on board. And, uh, sir, you came across like a seasoned pro. Uh, well done. All right. Thank you, Bill. And have a great day. Thank you very much.